and Barbara were at the Eden Valley Farm Stay, where the shearing school this year is taking place. This is the eighth school that we've done here, and we call them hubs. But this is really unique, this one, because it's an, a complete Aboriginal school. My name's Kevin Glatley, and I'm a shearer trainer. Right, these schools, we, uh, we hire a bus, you know, so we start at half past seven, so we work as a team, so we go together out to the job like they do in the real world. We get out to the shed and they've got their jobs to do. They already know they've got to you know, grab a handpiece, put a comb and cutter on and get prepared. Uh, I found it from Uncle Anthony, Jeremy's uncle, my cousin Jeremy, <laughs> he's here. Dad um, wouldn't stop talking about it to me and then, um, then I just thought to myself, might as well do it so you can be quiet. It makes me like very happy that it's an Aboriginal group because um, there's not that much Aboriginal kids cheering these days. It's like good to get the like old generation back to the young ones. In our day, we never had opportunity for something like this to happen to us. But now, all the kids come out of high school and stuff, they want to learn. They want to get their mind around and just not be on the streets drinking or doing drugs and stuff like that. You know, the bed is the main priority for these boys and girls. <laughs> Don't forget about the girls. <laughs> girls in the shed is some, like such a power move for us, you know? A lot of women weren't allowed in a shearing shed, whereas like now it's really coming up in the ranks for women is to be a shearer and to work in a shed, even if it's just some um, shed hand, you know, around there, even if it's sweeping and stuff, you're still having a shot at it. Oh uh, yeah, being at the school, like, made a lot of good mates out here. Yeah, I didn't really know these boys that well, but now like, yeah, getting closer to them. I feel, I feel pretty good. Um, we got, I got mates that talk, We're getting really close together, yeah all working together. It's such a great thing to be in this industry with your people. Like I'm here with all these Aboriginal fellas and Arnie Daisy, you know, and we're here and we're working as a team together as like one family, as like Aboriginal people should be doing. Back in the day, there was a really lot of Aboriginal people in there, but now it's kind of gone. But now like we can come back up and we can really get back into the industry through like these courses with Aboriginal people, with our own people and learn more stuff about it, you know? We're taking the hubs to these kids instead of making the kids come to where they're uncomfortable. Because it's so close to where I live and stuff, it's like not keeping me away from family. Like I get to go sleep in my own bed at night, which makes everything even better. How do you teach a young, young student, you know, well it's very difficult, you know, they've got to have confidence in themselves to be able to put the handpiece on the skin and push it along. Very rarely they cut them because they're really Getting it onto the skin is the hardest thing. I, I jabbed one when I first started in the belly and it, it kind of made me want to stop but I kept going. Because when you first started I was nervous about cutting the sheep and stuff. I was like no no we don't want to do it just in case we cut them. But when you explain to them what, what the, happens and everything then they start getting their confidence up more. Their confidence is just rising. You see their faces when they first did their first sheep, done it all. You see the smiles on the face glowing, we can, and that's awesome to see. The trainers, they really help a lot, like they're really engaging with you and like, everyone else in the group and just taking things step by step. So on day one, all the students come in, heads down, we're really, really shy. But the progression from day one now to day five is just outstanding. They all look me in the eye, they all have a good laugh, a good giggle and they're all interacting with each other and they all didn't know each other either. To be able to teach these students how to do the wool, we need a situation where we can just slow everything down for them to understand what actually happens in the shearing shed. Without the, the farmer giving up their sheep and their shed, we wouldn't be able to do the program. We have a 368 acre property and we run San Marino Cross Sheep. Our shearing contractor, Eddie McAllister, suggested that we host the shearing school and uh, we were very happy to do that. But in any case, we feel that uh, sheep owners do have some responsibility for maintaining the uh, pool of skilled shearers. Of course, if we don't have shearers, we, there's no point having sheep. So having the contractor on board is hugely important because without him giving up his sheep out of his contract, we wouldn't be able to do this school here. But also having his backup maybe to employ these young students also is a, a good foundation to have with the contractor. 
From day one I've learnt about the hand pieces and how to put them on and assemble a hand piece and then we learnt how to work a wool press which I never thought I would do in my life and then learnt how to handle wool and which, which goes where and what is what and then I, I got to do a little bit of a penning and herding of the sheep and it was really good having like, to learn more about what happens in a shearing shed than other than shearing because I thought it was just grabbing a sheep out, chucking him down and then chucking him back in the pen. But obviously there's more to it than just shearing sheep. The sky's the limit for these students. If they have that inner drive, inner strength to go on now because they'll get a job as a wool handler and they can be a presser, they can be a wool class, other shearing. But there's 200,000 jobs that come from one little bit of wool. So if they take their blinkers off, and have a look what they want to do because not everybody's cup of tea to share and you know be a shed end but there's many things within this industry that they can actually do. Uh, it feels pretty good actually starting to get used to it, sharing a sheep to myself. The age has not taught me at all. Like I said to my four kids, put your mind to it. If you want to do something, put it to it. Because I'm the youngest one there, it's like very like makes me want to like push myself to get like the others and like start sharing better makes dad proud as well and um, yeah it's good to see dad proud of me and all of them. One of the favourite things that we get told at the school is if you can see it you can do it and I think that speaks real facts because if you can see something then you can do something like and it's such like a really powerful thing to me if I can see it I'm gonna go have a crack at it and I'm gonna take the bull by the horns and just run with it. So these students that we've had in this five day program I believe I've got majority of them job ready, uh, be able to walk into a job as either a wool handler, but not only just that, as a wool presser as well. Uh, they've learnt the basics, but also they need that just that little bit of follow up on the on job training. I'd like to say I've done my job to be able to get them job ready. Who knows, maybe I'll do some wool tossing, see how I go, but I just want to really see the kids get there first. I'm happy with the kids, I'll see them. They're like my kids. <laughs> all, I've got respect for them, they've got respect for me, and everybody around us got all respect, no matter what. With the school now, potentially, I could see myself going like, overseas, steering and stuff to different states, and just being able to travel and like get my craft better. Uh, I see myself three months' time probably like cheering or, yeah, just like helping people out with shearing and like teaching them how to shear. If I uh, probably yeah, look for a job somewhere else, get out of something different, yeah, maybe change my life around. If there was another school to pop up, I'd really encourage um, people around my area, like other Indigenous boys, Noongar boys, to come out and get involved because the course is a really good course and it does give you a good pathway to where so you can get to places you wouldn't think you'd be able to go. I would encourage girls who would want to come out and who, who even haven't had done it before like I've never been in a shearing shed this is my first time but, but I would encourage them by telling them come out have a look have a feel you know see what it's like measure out if you like this or if you like that but it's just such a great opportunity to broaden your horizon and learn more stuff about agriculture too. My message to these kids is that, you know, there's nothing stopping them from doing whatever they want. Whatever they choose to do in their life, they are given skills here at this, you know, little hub to be able to walk away from here, you know, job ready and be able to be confident and hopefully, you know, turn their life around and do something for themselves. They're very capable, they're good with their hand and eye coordination and that's all you need to be a shearer or a shed hand.